you know what? At least when we when we slap shit together in in thirty minutes or less, it doesn't fall down and kill thirty or forty three people. <laughs> That's true. That's I need to make sure I have room for it. I got room for it. Okay, we're good. I keep giving you. What do you do with the shit I give you? <laughs> like well, honest I, question. I don't, I don't know how to computer, Liam. I I will. I don't know right, how. Well, I don't. I don't know oh how to install PDF. You just have a big stack time, of hard drives. He does. Mm-hmm. The next time I come over, I'll just install like the biggest one, and then I'll give you an SSD. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll slap you around a little bit with the hard drive, <laughs> so you learn your lesson. Not the platters, no. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That's right. I got to do. I got to use one of those those shitty uh, cashless SSDs <laughs> <laughs> that are basically worse than a hard drive. And they're like, no, no, it's just as good. Like, no, no. It's not though. So the, the the time to failure of one of those is like the time it takes eight you minutes. to slap Justin <laughs> eight, with eight it. Minutes. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. The Phillies are on. Mm. I'm not watching them right now. Hello and welcome to. Oh. All right. Well, well there's your fuck problem. Myself. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. Buongiorno. Uh, I am Alice Cordor Kelly. My pronouns are she and her. I am the person who's talking right now. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Yeah, don't fucking rush me, Roz. You're the guy we were waiting on. Yeah. <laughs> waiting for. Waiting, on. waiting on. We were waiting on you. This isn't a restaurant. I, we were waiting. <laughs> I, I, I'm literally going to punch you in the dick. Uh, did you miss us? <laughs> yeah, we missed you real bad. I missed us. <laughs> I I don't under like I, again. I thank you to our fans. Uh, moment of sincerity. But why do you people do this to yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even less self respect than we do. Yeah, it's just I don't know. When people are like, yeah, I'm such a big fan. I'm like, you should probably see some sort of psychiatrist for that. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, I would like to see the psychiatrist who's like two dollars a month. My psychologist told me to watch, um, oh, Abby. And I was like, yeah, uh, so I've recorded a podcast with Abby. <laughs> and he's like, really? Wow, what's she like? And I was like, oh, she's great. And I was like, why don't you talk about my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I have a podcast too, you know. <laughs> uh, All right, let's talk we, about a bridge What is fall this down. fucking thing? What is it? Yeah, let's go, uh, Liam, did let's you go. introduce yourself? I said, yeah, Liam, just and then I said Liam okay. Anderson. I didn't just complain. Uh, I'm right, Liam Anderson. Right. I'm the person talking right now, again. Thank you. <laughs> and my pronouns are he and him. Okay. We're, we're looking at a beautiful Italian town with a, a yes. very big uh, concrete it's, bridge it's over town. Down. I was about to say, but the bridge seems to stop making it more of a pier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the bridge over town doesn't go all the way over town. You gotta um, use your well, imagination. You know that scene from Raiders? With the invisible bridge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Just yeah, keep yeah. driving. Just floor up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, just floor, fuck it. What do it's you, fine. What this do is you a, care? This is sort of a a a, a New Testament fishing pier. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a bit like Darwinia yeah. too. There's a lot of like a lot of shit going on. Um, and follow me, and ye shall become fishers of men. <laughs> or you're gonna fall off the side, and bad shit's gonna happen yeah. to you. <laughs> this is Whatever. this this is the Ponte Morandi uh, in in Genoa. Uh, as of 2018, uh, and there, we're gonna. There's supposed to be a little bit more of it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about why there's not a little bit more of it. But first, yes. we have to do the goddamn, the goddamn news. Goddamn news. Uh, Eastern Kentucky flooded pretty bad. Yeah, that our section friends of the Trillbillies are not having yeah. a great time. I was I about to say, yeah. <laughs> I don't like that it's the time of monsters. Guess what uh, the next slide is. This is this is like <laughs> unprecedented, right? Like this isn't an area that's supposed to be prone to flooding, right? I those rivers get feisty every once in a while, but this Not was an like exceptional this. case. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know this, this is uh, National Weather Service said flooding on the North Fork of the Kentucky River at Whitesburg surged to a new record early Thursday, rising. 12 feet in 12 hours. Jesus. That's too many feet in two yeah. little hours. That's too, like, easily comprehensible a number. Like, you yes. know how occasionally in climate change stuff you'll, you'll hear a number and you're like, okay, that just breaks like my brain. Like a meter of sea level rise, even. Mm. Like, yeah. you, it's hard to picture what that looks like, because it's the ocean, you know? Yeah. 
But I, I can picture there is a foot of water here that there wasn't yeah. an hour ago, and that happens every hour for 12 consecutive hours. Yeah, I can I picture like that. that too well, don't I would like say. Uh, the, the flood stage, uh, the highest flood stage was uh, 16.8 feet. Fuck no. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, God damn, dude. And everything there is built in a river valley, and, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I mean, when we had the big flood here in Philly, it was almost comedic. Uh, this, this is built like serious business. Um, yeah, th this is not. Do not touch or swim mm -hmm. in the poop water. This is the poop water yeah. is now you know on top All of your water. town. The, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's now the poop water roof now. of your house. Yeah, and there's it, a lot of a lot of people down there living in like mobile homes and stuff. I was know? gonna say like this is happening to like very vulnerable and deprived places as we've talked about before on a, yes. at least a couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. The like mm -hmm. the Vulcan Bridge episode, and we did one about like uh, public education in Appalachia. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it must be very comforting to do the sort of, like, uh, liberal thing and be like, oh, well, shouldn't uh -huh, have been a Republican right, then. Right, yeah. right. And it's like, yeah, that's cute. Like, it's coming for you, too. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, I know, uh, I know, I know, I want to say Terrence of the Trillbilly has said that there's a couple of charities that's on the Apple Shop website. Um, I should have texted him, and I didn't. Then I just didn't. We'll do put that. something in the um, description. We'll put something we'll also, in the description. Yeah. We'll I mean, also, I think it, I can think we can and say that we will look into doing something with the Trillbillies, i.e., yeah. some sort of stream. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah in the interest like of that, yeah. blood relief. Yeah. I don't want to announce plans before they happen, but no, but that's I, something we'll, we'll, like we'll. I think we look can commit to that pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. It genuinely, yeah. it genuinely sounds like what they need more down there than money is uh, bodies. Um, and I don't know. All right, you want to go? Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? Let's try right, because I have vacation right the week of the fifteenth. No, I'm being deadly it's, serious. It's, it's sounding like well, there's your problem. <laughs> field recording time. Yeah, Roz. I uh, yeah, I'll text you after the show. Well, we can we can we can go down to Kentucky. We like Kentucky, dude. We do enjoy going to Kentucky. Um, yeah, you can right. you can you can save lives and you know also come back with a lot of whiskey. Yeah. Don't hold us yeah. up. We might, we yeah. may or may not do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you remember that Heaven Hill Green Label Roz that you can only fucking get in Kentucky? And then what happened, yeah. Roz? John Craig <laughs> drank it. No, you. I, I told you to babysit it, and you didn't. You're like, oh, he must have drank it all. And I was like, yeah, that. It's funny how that works, guy. Anyway, well, you know we <laughs> don't blame <laughs> me for Sean Craig's actions. That's true. I don't think he listens to the podcast. Uh, um, yeah, Sean, if you're listening, congratulations on your law school graduation, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of now is the time of monsters. Oh, I don't like it even more that it's now the time of monsters again. Yeah, Wait, this yeah. is this, but this is at least kind of kind of comical in how yeah. bad it is. Uh, so this is this is a little inside baseball for you. Uh, so what ha happened? Was that uh, at a what a happened was what had happened was at a at an abandoned semi abandoned according to who you ask row house in West Philly at 59th and Arch authorities discovered like a hundred and fifty gallons of gasoline in in this row house like just people, in jugs just people in jugs. love to like hoard it, individual it was, things for like some it. people it's hard drives for some people it's jugs of gasoline. We're this is the it, natural it was, way was, of the Philadelphian. It was literally gallon, uh, gallon milk jugs. jugs. Yeah, yeah, gallon <laughs> jugs just filled with gasoline. And the next day, twelve hours later, uh, the house mysteriously, after the one hundred fifty gallons of gas had been removed, went mysteriously up in flames. Anyway, that's crazy. Uh, and depending on who you believe, this is either like a neighborhood flood, a neighborhood feud. I mean, not a flood, a neighborhood feud, or just like a guy just doing some arson. Classic uh, gas so fight. In case, so in case you want to know how the summer heat is affecting us here in Philadelphia, we're trying to uh, move bomb our own neighbors. We're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, when you think about it, it's one of the most efficient ways to get, like, uh, energy into your house by volume, other than keeping uranium in there, and it's a lot less radioactive, so really this guy is, you know, he's, he's sort of like, just, he's energy maxing. What I don't understand about this is, I, I get hoarding gasoline in an effort to, like, blow up your own house and take everyone <laughs> in the neighborhood down with you. Like, that that part I'm on board with. But what I don't understand is, like, they sell five-gallon jugs 
but you can fill with <laughs> yeah, the, you're, you're like complaining this, the jugs. The jugs is situation. Jugs, 150 individual one gallon jugs <laughs> is not an efficient way to do arson. <laughs> Look, well, I mean, if listen, you can't maybe be good, at least be efficient. Maybe it's for like a distribution purposes. You know, you you, you you can't start you know fifty large fires, but you can start one hundred and fifty small fires, and that's you know again respect I, the hustle. But like, I gotta say, like storing large quantities of uh, flammable chemicals on residential property is not a good idea. Um, I, I I don't think any responsible person would do that. Um, Ross, he wasn't trying to be responsible. He was mad at his neighbors. They, well, that, that, that drives six ABC, even the best six of us. Six ABC to... interviewed the guy because he was a named person of interest before the shit caught fire, and he was like, "You know, it really hurts my feelings to be accused of this." I'm like, "Motherfucker, you're on video. It's you. It's you. How does it hurt your feelings?" Like he's like holding it, a gasoline jug in yes, each hand. Yes, he's filmed leaving the house with with jugs. <laughs> Like, if anyone... <laughs> Wearing a big I love arson t-shirt. <laughs> like, guy, you gotta you gotta look for cameras, man. It's This is the era of the surveillance state, you know? I'm, I'm like, 150 gallons of gasoline. If you set that on fire, that's gonna be... That's not just gonna take out one house. That's gonna take out at least three or four. Supposedly, yeah. that's what he was aiming for. <laughs> Neighborhood disputes are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think about the time that my my upstairs neighbor's smoke alarm was going off every ten minutes for four days, and I I I too, you know, I, I'm not sure I could resist the siren call of the gallon ja gasoline jug. What what I'm saying is we need Eagles football back, so this whole city calms down a little bit. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, yeah we, once, we once really, the Eagles are back, yeah, we really need the birds to come back in the interest of public safety. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting feisty. Yeah, settle down, so, watch the game. So send in the birds. <laughs> send in the birds. <laughs> Malcolm Jenkins would never do this. <laughs> well, that was the goddamn news. All right. First, we have to ask ourselves a very what deep question. Italy? What is Italy? Uh, it's, uh, it's the place the I've been both I've... most relaxed and most stressed. It's a land of contrast in that it way. Is a <laughs> contrast uh, in that. Roz, do your parents listen to this? Occasionally? Roz? I'm not uh, sure. I was going to make fun of your dad. Uh, mm. I think you can probably like sneak it in. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. I was. Uh, I was on vacation in Rome with my parents uh, recently, a couple months ago. Things and, did not go one great. Thing, the one thing that happens when you go on vacation with your parents after not doing a vacation in 10 years um, is you realize your parents are fucking insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just spent last weekend uh, in uh, upstate New York with my parents and Corinne, and I love my parents very dearly. I know they listen to this, and, and I gotta say, uh, Dad, you need to fucking pull it together a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I haven't been on vacation with my parents since I was 12 years old, and I'm going to keep it that way for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> but my, so we're my looking... dad's a fun traveler, but then he's just like, I'm hot. I, you know, my back hurts, my shoulder hurts, and he's got the best seat in the car. He's all spread out and relaxed, like on, like on my mom, who is basically <laughs> fighting for leg room where she shouldn't have to be fighting, and he's just like, I'm not comfortable, and I'm just like, you'd be a lot less fucking comfortable in the GTI. I'll tell you that right fucking now, old man. All right, stop fucking. And then he has your, the dad, your dad just needs audacity. to be like carried in a litter, like yeah. a sort of like Ottoman yes, pasha. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> And get a, get he has the goddamn chair. audacity to be like, oh, the GTI is too small. I'm like, motherfucker, there's just two of us. I'm not hauling, I'm not hauling shit around. I'm just hauling like car parts. So How dare you? <laughs> it gets 30 it gets 30 miles to the gallon and it makes goddamn near 400 horsepower now, Dad. You, you, I bet you, the fucking Cherokee never did that, did it? No, because you, you, you couldn't fucking better drive. For this. You feel yeah, better. I actually am. Yeah. Okay, I love my dad good. very much. This is ther yeah. therapeutic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> what we're looking at here is the city of Genoa. It's got a V in it in Italian, but I'm gonna keep yes. calling it Genoa. Genovia? Uh, yeah, Genova. Yeah. Uh Genova. It's Genovia from the Princess Bride. That's right. Uh, Princess, big... Was it Princess Bride or Princess Diaries? Yeah, I think so. Princess Diaries. Yeah, same same difference. Uh, Sounds like an movies. environmentally efficient uh, diesel engine from General Nova. Yeah, 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 totally. Uh, G E Nova. As you can tell from the photo on the left, Genoa is like uh, pretty in a sense, but not like 
Rome or whatever. Like, um, it's That's it's big. quite industrial. It's a big honking port. They used to make a lot of ships there. It's it's Italian Glasgow, basically. Um, gotta, it's got a work in the waterfront. The origin of the word jeans. Ah, Ooh. is it interesting? Yes, it is. Uh, it's 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 the capital of Liguria. Um, Liguria these nuts. Yeah, Liguria balls. It's the city that inflicted Christopher Columbus upon the world. Thanks for um, that analysis. <laughs> and it's it's built around this natural harbor that you can see on the map there, uh, and this river valley, the Polchevera. I think it's pronounced that way. It does do not, not get, matter. Do not get mad at me in the comments, otherwise I will deploy anti-Italian slurs and stereotypes. Um, yes. If if you notice, I'm making a pizza. <laughs> yeah, I cook it a pizza. <laughs> I cook a pizza. Mafia is not an aesthetic. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so the people the people of Genoa cook it a pizza in uh, a variety of different places, but the two that I want to talk about here are on the bottom of that map: uh, San Piedarena and Corniliano. Uh, these names, man. Um, the, I know. The, I know. These are two like sort of. Uh, areas of Genoa that are opposite each other, on opposite sides of like a river valley, and there's sort of like it's very mountainous terrain outside of this harbor area. Uh, next slide, please. So, Genoa was a very important city in terms of building ships. Uh, this means that it's also one of the most heavily urban planned cities in Italy, in that it was urban planned for several years by RAF yeah. Bomber Command. Ah, yes. that joke makes me so happy. <laughs> I, I, I originally was going to do the US Army Air Forces, but it was mostly us. It was mostly us who like bombed, did area bombing of Genoa. And uh, you guys did Dresden too. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and you know, similar sort of like uh, Sigma Arthur Harris bomber mindset going into this, where we just leveled huge amounts of Genoa. Um, uh, and like revenge uh, for Columbus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so Genoa was like. Largely destroyed. You see some destroyed housing stock here, and this led in the post-war years to you know we, we've talked about post-war Italian politics before, um, and how everything is like six different conspiracies happening at once. Well, in Genoa, you have a lot of like building speculation, property speculation, the construction industry, and the reconstruction industry, and the destruction industry of like tearing down old historic districts. Um, and I, I might be willing to imply that some of this was not entirely above board. You, um, you designate a district bombed that was not in fact bombed, so you can tear it down. <laughs> yeah, real sort of <laughs> crassus hours. Um, so, but but Genoa, uh, it does rebuild and it, its population increases. And next slide, please. Someone has the bright idea. What if we bridge that river valley so you can drive from San Pierre d'Arena to Corneliano and vice versa? Um, what if we just build a whole system of like Italian motorways and hook that yes. into a system of European motorways? Um, what if you just called Taylor up? <laughs> yeah, don't worry I, about that. Don't don't. Worry I'm, about I'm me. just I'm just I'm just laughing because it sounds like something I should laugh at. Um, it's if, a TikTok. I. Implore you not to oh laugh at God, it. Actually, don't, uh, don't, don't go on TikTok. <laughs> don't go on TikTok. Uh, if you have a girlfriend who bugs you all the time to look at TikToks, uh, don't. Mm. Some great cars in this photo, by the way. Some like oh, yeah. vintage Alfa Romeos. Romei. There's also some nice. Uh, you can see the deck undulating on the bridge. We'll oh, get to that later. It's it's uh, supposed to do she that. Undulate I undulate on my deck until I. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is not supposed to do that. So, <laughs> so, if, it is. so if, if you've ever played Euro Truck Simulator two, if you haven't, you should. You you'll be familiar pretty intimately with the sort of like broader European infrastructural thing that led to the construction of this bridge. Uh, the sort of European route. It's on the main European route between France and northern Italy. Uh, it's sometimes called the Route of Flowers or European Route 80. Um, this bridge was modeled in that game and then it fell down and they modeled it being fallen down for a bit. Um, That's crass, I like that. <laughs> no, 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 it was, seriously, it was like a, it was sort of a, like a user event that you could go and deliver stuff to the reconstruction thing, it was cool. Um, but so, it, this is part of a broader sort of like uh, automobilization of Europe. Uh, everybody commutes by car, we ship everything by truck. Yes. Uh, this is done by a, a state-owned corporation in Italy called Autostrade, 
uh, they build all of these roads, they maintain all of them. Um, and in order to bridge this very mountainous terrain, in order to bridge this river valley, they hire a guy. Next slide, please. They hire a guy called Ricardo Morandi, or, and I like this nickname a lot, Le Corbusier on four wheels. Wow. Yeah, he's what? famous for building bridges that are good and stay up. <laughs> yeah, I got I like, the most sort of like unflattering photo of him I could. I, I like his, uh, I like he's looking at his little model here though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like a weird Dutch angle. Mm -hmm. um, but so, he made bridges almost exclusively, uh, particularly these cable stayed type of bridges. Again, famous for not having any problems. Quote unquote cable stayed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. His Wikipedia article is the best example of, <laughs> like, is, is. crisis we writing, management. We, we were writing this, I cannot emphasize this enough, this morning. Yes. Uh, yeah. Alice and I were, because Roz was asleep, and our uh, our guest uh, player to be named later uh, has got COVID. COVID. Yeah. Got COVID. Yeah, got COVID. So we, we wrote this in 20 minutes, but his Wikipedia article does contain a fantastic sentence. Uh, Riccardo Morandi was an Italian civil engineer best known for his innovative use of reinforced concrete and pre-stressed concrete, although, over the years, some of his particular cable stayed bridges have had some maintenance trouble. Um, yes, oh that, is, that is euphemism at its best. <laughs> so, it, it, I mean, the, he likes pretty much exclusively this type of bridge, he builds them in, like, across different continents, there's one of these in he Libya, Quite a few of them, yes. Yeah. One of them's there's one of them in Venezuela, um, and there's there's so, there's several reasons why you might build a bridge like this. Um, most notably, in 1950s Italy, steel is very expensive, but you have a lot of the like sediment and clay and shit that you need to make concrete. So that that's why like a lot of it like uh, the sort big of issue with that argument is that. To Sorry, make what it, argument? The big the, issue with the argument that it's cheaper to build with concrete than steel is that in order to use concrete on this type of bridge, you actually use more steel than if you didn't use the concrete. <laughs> don't, don't defeat me with don't logic. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is it's, it is something that I have found Italians talking about themselves, about how post-war Italian architecture is heavily concrete based uh, and, and it's, it was sort of like a matter of national prestige that they were the people who could like bend concrete um, and you know it, it, it looks very sort of like skinny and elegant and there's okay, like good sight logic, lines. Drexel University is the most elegant university in the whole world. I, the orange brick is good. I like the orange brick. I also like the orange <laughs> it all, brick. It all looks. It, uh, that was campus talking. was incredible looking in like 1963 or so. Or else we went to school in 2011. Yeah, it looks terrible. It looks terrible now. <laughs> they fucked that shit up real bad. Um, you remember the, <laughs> the green wall that just died instantaneously? That was funny as shit. They have to <laughs> replant that thing every year. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 they never got it working, to my it's, knowledge. It's, it's time for fake plastic plants, I think, yes. at that point. <laughs> but, May as well. <laughs> we got to talk about like how these buildings are built, how these bridges yeah. are built, which means we got to talk about pre-stressed concrete, which means next slide. Uh, uh, I was I, I was just going to say down here is uh I have oh. been over one of his bridges. It's this really? one. This is the Via Dada Anza de Tevere, right? This is on uh, the road sure. from uh Fumicino Airport to uh Central Rome. It's uh, one of the highways there. It goes over nothing. <laughs> um I think it goes over the remnants of a landslide. When I was on the van because my parents, instead of us taking a, a, a nice a nice fast train to the apartment, we got a we got a van, you know, a taxi. Uh, and when I saw this coming up, I was like, "Oh shit, it's a Mirandi bridge." <laughs> All right, well, oh, it's, been my good God. it's been good knowing y'all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 when I knew I was taking my life into my own hands on this vacation <laughs> if I allowed my parents to determine what we were doing. <laughs> that's the lesson: never go on vacation. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm right. it enough. I, I I stand back from the next many slides because this is all the engineering I, stuff I, that I was, I'm not I was qualified about to for. Say, I saw I saw someone else writing this and I was like I, was I, me, I woke up and I looked at it and I was like, all right. All right, I gotta take over here. <laughs> yeah. Cracks, knuckles. We wrote this in 20 minutes, gotta, man. You gotta, were asleep. <laughs> gotta assume some control here. 
No, so, you talk so, about it. <laughs> Yo, no, I'm Justin Rosiak. I'm the person who's talking right now. Pre, pre, pre-stressed concrete is it good because it, ma- it makes it more rigid. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. It is cheaper. Like, it is cheaper, it, possibly. Uh, it yeah, possibly. I'm, I'm, st- I'm possibly. still stinging from being being like owned <laughs> in the previous slide. I, I do yeah. want to point out that uh, uh, at Charlotte Motor Speedway, uh, May 20th, 2000, uh, it turns out uh, the company that had built the concrete pedestrian bridge uh, had had illegally added a chemical to make it cure faster, and then the whole thing fell 17 feet and injured like 107 people. Uh, right. So what I'm saying is, uh, don't do pre-stressed concrete. Uh, build everything out of you know. Don't build anything. Yeah. You know what? Just don't. All right, Roz, go. Okay. So you want to be an engineer? So here's, fucking here, bad. Here's the thing about concrete, right? Oh boy. Very good if you squeeze it. If it's in compression, you try and pull apart, it it, it breaks instantly. Because it's just a bunch of uh, rocks with like a binder, right? Mm. Yeah. Mood. So, what if you wanted? What if you wanted to uh, have concrete work in tension as well as compression? Um, don't do a couple that, of options. idiot. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, number one, but you have a couple of options though if you really want to do it. One of which is reinforced concrete. You put some uh, steel reinforcing bar in there you cast the concrete around it boom you got a sort of this matrix of materials there that performs pretty okay in both tension and compression right another option if you want to go if you have like some kind of specific application which requires like a really long concrete span or a wide one or something like that you can do this fun thing called pre-stressing right and the idea of pre-stressing is you take a couple big steel rods or wires, right? Mm. And you yeah. stress them out, right? And then you, say you tell, you tell them they have get... to write a podcast in 20 minutes. Artificial yeah. deadlines. That's what, that, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. You, you, you put them under a whole bunch of tension. Then yeah, we were, man. Again, wrote in 20 minutes. <laughs> then you pour concrete around them. Well, at least you didn't do that. And mm. then you release the tensions, tension when the concrete is cured, right? Um, that is classical pre-stressing, but pre-stressed concrete actually, at this point, like pre-stress involves, uh, there's several ways you can do it. Other than this, you can do post-tensioning. Um, you can do like modern post-tensioning lets you adjust the tension over time or replace the cables if you need to. But classic pre-stressed concrete, this is the method. Right. Sure. Um, and this is useful for a lot of things like floors, girders. Um, y- you could do a whole bunch of stuff with it. But um, our, our, our friend Mirandi had an idea, which is what if we tried to use it for a cable stayed bridge? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, make make and- the stays themselves out of. What we'll do is we'll braid the concrete. concrete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about the bridge. So here's the bridge, right? Um, you can see it goes over the rivers down here. There's a railroad yard here. Um, there's an exit that joins the bridge over here. There's this highway exit. Yeah, here. In, instead of being a bridge that goes over nothing, it's a bridge that kind of goes over everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's this weird situation where it's like nominally it's supposed to be a bypass, and it does bypass, I guess, but it's like it's physically it's in the place that it's bypassing. It, it looks like it has an apartment building underneath it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but actually, multiple apartment buildings. Multiple apartment buildings. Oh god, good, like good idea. Good idea. All um, those weird buildings right over the uh, the mass pipe coming into Boston. Don't like those. Yeah. This is you, you know what else it has under it or or next to it? it has a steel mill next to it. We're gonna oh, get wow. there. <laughs> so yeah, the the current current location of the bridge up here, um, you know, you sort of the harbor we showed before is over here. You go on a highway, you go through a bunch of tunnels, you go over the bridge, you go you go on a highway, yeah. you go you know, you go this up is, a bunch this... of like funky curves. It's cool. The yeah, other it's thing. Italian infrastructure things where there's like a million tunnels and a million bridges and they built it for 20 lira. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
The the other thing about this, by the way, is that because it's in a river valley, pretty close to the sea, is it just gets a lot of very salt wind just whipping directly down that valley. Yes, uh, th th this will also be important later. Um, so this is Barandi's model of one of the pillars, right? Um, this is where we should look at the. Uh, it looks it looks cool. It, it's a good looking bridge. I will say that. Yeah. It looks really cool. Um, so what are the forces acting on a cable state bridge? Um, um, we've which, literally done this multiple yes. times, and I still don't remember. You're going to take away the college credits I got for doing this earlier. Uh, there's one force acting on it, which is gravity. Including Fuck, shit, know, I the, the weight remembered of the vehicles, that. right? Sure. Um, so your gravity is a downward vector, right? Uh, you know, that, that points directly to the center of the earth where hell is. Um, <laughs> because we all want to go there, right? Um, and speak for yourself, so, I'm building a big sort of block staircase up. In order to, in order to uh, counteract that, in order to support this bridge deck, you have a big pillar, right? Providing your upward force, but this is distributed in a diagonal fashion by way of these cable stays, which means. There's now a horizontal component as well, so these bridge decks have to be able to counteract that force, so the deck is in compression horizontally from uh, the cable stay, so these have to be pretty rigid. This is opposed to like yes. a suspension bridge, <laughs> where... Um, opposed to like, Yeah. <laughs> That's right. As opposed to a suspension bridge where everything's hung vertically and there's not as much... Uh, you know, I, I too have hung vertically. Structure it's required on the uh, bridge deck there. Uh, this is this is more of an involved operation, but theoretically uses less material. But on these cables, on these cable stays, this is all tension. Yeah, it like wants tension. to pull apart in both directions, right? Yes. Right. Um, you know, it's all tension. All of it's tension. And that means... Concrete is only going to give you grief. Mm. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is not going to help That's you in funny. any way. Because um, what you've done is you want to use steel for this, I guess? Yeah, or, you, you use steel cables. Okay. Yeah, but what, what you've done is you've uh, used concrete, which is bad, and then in an attempt to rectify that, you've added you've steel that you would otherwise have used to just do it. Actually, more steel than you need. Um, so here's... I stole this image from uh, a blog post on retrofuture.org because we were working fast. Uh, apologies for stealing all the information off that blog. Every um, slide, every, every image you have ever seen in this podcast has been it's, stolen. It's, yeah, that's well, true. It's all we take, we, take a, we take a sort of libertarian approach to intellectual property here. Yeah. So, so here's here's an interesting thing about how uh, our boy. Uh, Mirandi uh, design these cable stays. And actually, I have to erase a bunch of these lines now. How do I do that? Just go, go over them there in white go. with the jump. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so what do you might notice here? What you might notice here, and this is one of the worst details I've seen in my life. Um, at the base of the cable, at the bottom of the cable where it meets the uh, deck, you can see here there are two concrete sections. And at some point up here or somewhere, they merge into one concrete section. Yeah, because oh, it gives the impression of like speed and elegance <laughs> and shit. Yes. Yeah. So here are the two cross sections of those uh those girders, I guess you would call them. I don't I uh, stays, whatever. Uh sure. at the top of the stay, it's this section, right? And at the bottom of the se section, it's these two stays, right? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we have the, the A cables and the B cables here. Not my terminology. This is from the blog. Um, but it's a good way to distinguish them. The A cables are in the middle, right? And the B cables are on the outside. Um, and of course, they split up as they go further down, right? Um, these A cables were installed and tightened first before casting the concrete. The bridge was actually fully self-supporting with only those cables. Uh, we'll see that in the next slide. 
uh, but since they were installed, they were under tension. They couldn't, you know, pre-stress them or post-tension them or something, right? I have yeah. a question and one that sort of answers itself, which is, if it holds itself up like that, why not just leave them like that and Elegance. don't put all of this Shut shit up. over them? And my, so, my sort of proposed answer to this is that uh, Mirandi also made another bridge like this, but he did leave them unclad in Venezuela, and those corroded instantly. Oh, super um, fast, and, yeah. And, and we'll get to that. Uh, Mirandi's theory was that if they were encased in concrete, they would corrode more slowly, or they wouldn't corrode at all, um, which turned out not to be the case. Hmm. Uh, so. You know, once these A cables were installed, the bridge was self-supporting. They installed the B cables. These are the ones on the outside. We'll see that in the next slide. Um, and these were tensioned in such a way that during the maximum load condition of the bridge, right? You know, yeah. it's fully loaded. There's a bunch of trucks on it. There's snow, whatever. Yeah, the B a, cables, a, a obese man riding a very small bicycle, all of this. Several right, right. obese men riding several <laughs> small bicycles. Richard, Richard yes. Scary's busy town, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a worm driving an apple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very heavy apple. These B cables would keep the concrete um, effectively structurally neutral, right? It, it would be at zero compression, zero tension, right? Mm. Those so are the it's outer just, cables. It's just a box over the thing. Yes. Okay. Because the, the concrete girder around it, of course, um, is a liability at this point. Uh, oh, sure. You know, and then when the bridge is unloaded, like there's you know, light traffic that day, then the tension on the B cables keeps the entire girder sort of in moderate light compression, right? Um. There's some problems with this design, right? Uh, right off the bat. Uh, number one is like, why are you using the concrete in the first place? And his theory is, as I said, he's going to reduce co corrosion. Um, the other problem is the, the cross section of the concrete here is very small, right? That mm. means you can't put a lot of tension on the pre-stressing cables, right? Um, if you put a lot of tension on there, it would tend to buckle the concrete, right? And that would cause cracks, and that would lead to water infiltration, and that would cause corrosion, corrosion. right? All sorts of yeah. problems, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mirandi basically has to keep the tensioning on these cables at sort of the bleeding edge of structural stability um, in Always order for this news. design Always to work. News. Um, Why does he think that this is a good idea? Surely this is the kind of thing that you have to calculate and be like, oh, this makes me uncomfortable. Uh, it's going to resist corrosion. Uh, yeah, okay. awesome. yeah. yeah, he, he going to resist sort of corrosion. He's got a one-track mind here. Because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's by the sea, and besides, that other bridge in Venezuela had very nearly fallen down, and they had to replace all of the, the fucking the steel, so... What if you've made it impossible to replace the steel? Um, <laughs> ah, no one can get mad at me. Yeah. So you can see these are pictures of the bridge under construction. Right here, you can see these are the A cables, right? And there's a safety structure underneath. Um, in this other image, the, the, the cables are color coded. Again, I stole this from Retro Future. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. you know, <laughs> yeah. So um, it's a transformative see, work because we're making yeah. dick jokes over it. This yeah. is true. This is true. Um, so. You can see the A cables are tensioned here. This is as they're casting the concrete. The B cables, these are just limp at the moment. They're going to tension those after they finish casting the concrete, right? Mm. Um, so you can see here's the completed bridge. It's very thin and dainty. It looks very nice. Just elegant Italian type design. And elegant Italian type design has never had problems. No, right? that's oh, right. That's no, why. That's, that's true and correct. The, the, yeah. the sort of famously hard wearing Alfa Romeo things of this nature. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it's like it's, it's like they always say, you know, you can fix it's Italian shit. You can fix it with a shovel. Who uh, knew you could? Who knew carbon fiber could rust? Only it, the Italians. It, it, <laughs> it's it's got like two. It's got like two parts. They're both interchangeable. It works without either of them. 
Uh, <laughs> there is what actually there is one piece of Italian machinery that's true of it's just it's a coffee pot. Um, like the mocha pot. Yeah, a, a mocha yep. pot is the Italian AK forty seven. Uh, it, th that will work without sort of any moving parts. They're really uh, bad on an electric stove. I've, yeah, I've found. Yeah, that's true. But get a real stove. I. We're I'll ask my landlord it. about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it what? starts to have problems almost immediately, right? Oh um, sure. You, you, you go dust off your your sleeves, and then you look at the bridge, which has collapsed into a big pile of rust. And you think to yourself, "Java, well done." Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. There's Sorry. this song by Radiohead called "Creep." Oh my god, I hate that um, fucking song. And it's about <laughs> it's about concrete, right? Um, no, it's about donuts. No, I'm not listening to all of this. I'm, I, I've done, I have, I have I gone. Do not belong here. I, I have <laughs> left work. Good, I am guy. going home to my impossibly beautiful wife. She looks like she's from a Paolo Sorrentino movie. She is cooking me the pizza, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm I just having pizza. exactly, and I'm having I'm la dolce vita. I'm, I'm riding around on a little moped. I'm not paying attention to any of this shit. <laughs> so. <laughs> Creep. I'm conducting right, a so. series of like stay behind guerrilla operations <laughs> to maintain a strategy yeah. of tension. <laughs> Over time, concrete tends to change its shape under any kind of load, right? This is called creep. Creep happens in many materials, but um, in things like, like steel or um, other metals, it tends to happen on, only under high loads as opposed to under any kind of load, right? Um, so this bridge was under an exceptionally weird set of forces, right? <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. You know, these cables bore the weight of the bridge, but they were under additional tension to keep the concrete in place. Uh, had cyclical loading, right? The cross section of the, uh, cable stays was very dainty that the bridge started to experience uh, large amounts of creep mostly from the concrete, very quickly, right? And that meant that, among other things, they never successfully leveled the road deck. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Turning on my sort of, like, all-terrain to go over yes. this bridge. That meant when it rained, a whole bunch of water would just form giant puddles on the bridge. Oh, it's a swimming pool. Um... The, 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 there is there is another detail about this, which is you will occasionally see. This is sort of the tabloid angle: is uh, to what extent this being Italy was organized crime involved. In fact, sometimes they'll even say the mafia. Although in general we're talking about the drangheta rather than the mafia. But they're like the, the sort of like popular conception of this is Italy is a mobbed up country. Therefore, particularly in the construction industry, the mob gave them bad concrete and the bridge fall down. Um, that's not true, like, in terms of supplying good quality concrete, something that like, Italy was quite good at, even in the depths of the years of lead. What was heavily, like, crime infiltrated was, like, construction repair and maintenance and stuff. So, one lingering question is, the guys who you get to repair the bridge and try and level the bridge, maybe those guys aren't necessarily uh, the guys who should be doing it. I'm, I'm going to say this. If you got the best quality concrete money could buy, if you got the, the 10,000 PSI stuff that they only mm. manufacture for like university earthquake testing rigs, if you mm. got the world's greatest concrete, that would make this bridge exceptionally harder to build. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you would have to pre-stress it that much more. <laughs> So, shit, maybe they should have had mob concrete, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Lightweight the concrete. aerodynamic concrete. Yeah, yeah. It's the concrete super ligaria. Uh, beat holes. <laughs> so another issue here was corrosion, right? Um, a big problem with reinforced concrete in general, including pre-stress, post-tension, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there's metal in it. That metal corrodes over time. Um... This is also a problem with all steel structures, but the thing is, with an all steel structure, you can see the corrosion. Mm. And then, once you see it, you can fix it. Theoretically. Uh, some places aren't very good with that, you know, I, the, the, the Pittsburgh, for instance. 
Um, <laughs> you, that, well, you can see it happening. You just have to also care that it's happening. Um, uh, yes, uh, there's lots of sources of corrosion. You got water infiltration. You might have chemical re reactions between the concrete and the steel. Uh, a fun one is like electrochemical stuff. I don't know if I've relayed this anecdote on the pod before. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. I used to work with a guy uh, who we call Kaz, um, which is fun because I was Roz and he was Kaz. Mm. Uh, but he did structural restoration for a long time did a lot of reinforced concrete stuff he worked on the the watermaker building here in philly down in the 80s right or back in the 80s he was in the basement the thing about the watermaker building is uh or, or they opened up they opened up one of the walls to check on the rebar how the rebar was doing and they they opened it up and the rebar was not there wow, okay oh, good yeah the, uh, none, none of it was there not all of it had disappeared um, this is a big, like 1920s sort of department store building, right? Uh, has the world's largest operational pipe organ. Um, so there were two questions to be asked there, which was one, why is it gone? And two, how do we fix it? Liam, I can't believe you missed has the world's largest operational pipe organ. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't actually. That's false. The world's oper largest operational pipe organ is in my pants. Uh, Oh. Got there eventually. Got right. there eventually. So, I don't know if I'm coming or going, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Nelson Rockefeller. <laughs> it turned out what had happened was on one side of the Wanamaker building was the trolley tunnel. On the other side of the Wanamaker building was the Market Frankfurt L. And they operated very slightly different voltages. And over the course of like 70 years, the current ran from the trolley to the L through the rebar in the Watermaker building and sort of electrolyzed it away. What the fuck? Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> Use, I'm, I'm using the world's largest operational pipe organ's whole building as an electrolyte, as an electrode, yeah. rather. And, and this is... This is some of the wacky stuff that can happen That's with reinforced concrete. Cool as hell. Right? So, it's, so what I'm learning here is that steel just wants to corrode, and if it does, it, it'll just decide to do it. Yeah, for especially pretty much if any you're reason. not able to look at it and tell it to cut that out. Yeah, it's right? sneaky, <laughs> which is something you can do Bastards. in a steel building. <laughs> <laughs> so. A lot of the stuff you could mitigate. One of the, one thing that's pretty popular is you jacket the rebar with some kind of material, right? You jack off the rebar. Mm. You you put a what? you put some kind of uh, plastic on top of it, right? Uh, and that reduces con uh, contact oh, oil. with oil. Is yeah. there any problem you can't solve? This this reduces contact with the uh, concrete, right? And theoretically prevents corrosion. The big problem. With putting it in plastic, though, is that there's any small hole in the plastic <laughs> where anything can come in contact with the steel, all of a sudden it corrodes like hell right from that spot at like a hugely accelerated rate. Uh, Everything <laughs> leaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, this this bridge had problems with corrosion. Uh, another well, problem. It's, it's had, next to a steel mill and the sea. Yes, but you can't look at the steel. 
You don't know that it's broken. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) Another problem with especially pre-stress structures, um, post-tensioning has mitigated this to some extent, is uh, something called relaxation, right? So over time, your your tensioned cables inside uh, the concrete, they relax. Mm -hmm. They stop getting so stressed out. You know, they 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 just God, sit down on the me. couch. You know, they watch uh, watch a couple seasons of The Sopranos in a day. You know, <laughs> um, and this once they're not, once they're no longer under tension, suddenly the the properties of the concrete have changed pretty dramatically in that they're not able to handle tension at all. Right, um, a lot of modern structures are allowed are, are built to allow for. Uh, you you can retension the steel every couple of years if you need to, more sure. than every couple of years, every couple of decades maybe, right? Or you can replace it. Mirandi's design did not allow for this. Ideal. Bridges never need maintenance. I love it. I love the idea of a disposable bridge. Yes, I, I should that, point out this this bridge did have a specified lifespan, which was fifty years. years. Yeah, yes, it came yes. down to fifty one. That's yes. right. So it did, it did what it did on the it did what it said on the tape. What's the problem? Or <laughs> performs as advertised. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Leave at five p.m. on the dot. So, so yeah, Mirandi's design meant that when the steel was in the concrete, it was in the concrete. You never saw that again, right? Mm. And that, that's uh, uh, another another issue with it is um, something you might call inspectability. I, it's a word I just made up. There might be a real word for this. It was very difficult to find out if something was going wrong with the bridge, right? Um, all the cables are embedded in concrete. All the structures concealed. You know, if 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 a cable broke or there was corrosion, you couldn't detect it, right? Um, and in in 1979, uh, Mirandi himself noted, "Well, there's a whole bunch of deficiencies in the bridge that we can remedy, right?" Mm. He wanted um. And a last murder of the cables. He wanted some reinforcements, but he defended the fundamental design as sound, right? He says, uh, we must think about would have been what would have been the maintenance costs if, instead of a structure made entirely of concrete, a steel solution had been adopted, or at least if the solution of the stay cables embedded in a concrete shell under compression and therefore not subject to cracking had not been adopted. He's not very good at writing. Um, I can barely. Thanks, guy. Yeah, I, 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 I can barely figure out what he's saying here. He also it, says, it sounds better and it sounds more poetic in the original Italian. In the original say. Italian, yeah. yeah. So I was about to say the translation might not be that good. Furthermore, in these last years, the external surfaces of the structures, and especially those exposed towards the sea, and therefore more directly attached by the acid fumes of the chimneys start showing an aggression phenomena of chemical origin. That is a cool phrase. An aggression (laughs) phenomenon of a chemical origin? Yes, this is obviously due to the production of soluble salts resulting from the combination of acids of the fumes with the free lime of the concrete, the well-known loss of superficial chemical resistance of the concrete itself. Uh, I think he's talking about efflorescence there, which is usually harmless, but doesn't look good. Um, I think think is with a ck that sooner or later (laughs) maybe maybe is two words in a few (laughs) years it will be necessary to resort to a treatment consisting of the removal of all traces of rust on the exposure of the reinforcements to fill the patches with an epoxidic type resins and finally Mm -hmm. to cover everything with elastomers of very high chemical resistance but he thinks the design is sound because he thinks this is resisting corrosion far better than what bare steel would, right? Hmm. Uh, the issue is it didn't, no. right? No. Um, and of the parts of the bridge they were able to monitor, uh, it was fairly clear by like the 90s they got to do some fixes, right? Sure. So this is, this is Pylon 11. This is a picture from, again, uh, Retro Future, where I stole a good chunk of this from. Uh, this is a picture from Google Maps. Um, this is the easternmost cable stay. We did this stay. in 20 minutes. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. this is the easternmost cable stay. It's the one with the, the exit that comes in, right? Um, or I guess an entrance ramp. 
Uh, and this saw some of the most advanced decay of any part of the bridge, any part that was monitored, right? Uh, and they required a major structural refit, which it received in 1993. What they did here, what they did here is they took and they put exterior steel cables on the concrete cable stays, right? Huh. Mm -hmm. That is an elegant solution. No, oh, it is Italians. Isn't. Th 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 shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just taking L after L here, aren't I? You're very pretty, at least. Thank you. So here's the problem. <laughs> What is it the you, problem, man? The whole thing is called, <laughs> well, there's your problem. <laughs> if you simply added more cables, what would happen is you would overstress the concrete girder and it would buckle. Oh, right? that's bad. So as they were adding these new cables, they had to go in with big concrete circular saws, oh my cut God. a window <laughs> into the girder, and then cut the old cable each time they put a new one in. Oh, they had a Jaws of Life, that bitch. I love it. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the sort of medical surgical equivalent of this, which is to like, your arm is fucked up, right? We're not going to amputate it. What we are going to do is build like a prosthetic arm that attaches just above it. Yes. <laughs> The net hell, result of this is yeah. that this bridge becomes the most monitored bridge in Europe because it's so difficult to maintain. It's very temperamental, right? Mm. But, it, but it also becomes a weird source of pride, right? They, te they teach about the bridge in Italian engineering schools. They show students how this is how we monitor structures. This is how we fix structures that are broken, even if they're fundamentally broken. You know, we keep the thing. We kept the thing standing. We're doing great. And it looks pretty cool, right? This was what I was operating off of. Yeah. So anyway, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was what happened was the future. And specifically the nineteen nineties. You remember uh Autostrada, the like mm -hmm. uh, sort of public, the state run corporation that builds all of the motorways and maintains them? Well, as we progress into modernity, as people drive more, there are more cars, there are heavier trucks, the worm is driving an apple, all of this. Uh, in 1999, Italy wants to join the European Union. Because the European Union is largely sort of fiscally administered by psychotic Germans, yes. there are very strict fiscal requirements to join the European Union. Uh, fiscal requirements that require you to have, uh, to grossly oversimplify, a lot of sort of ability to have cash on hand, which the Italian state does not. Um, and so one of the ways, and in fact the, the EU sort of like fiscal accession stuff is designed to encourage this, one of the ways to raise that sort of capital is to privatize. And in 1999, Autostrade is privatized, and it is bought by the Benetton family, uh, the clothes people. Yeah, those do, assholes. Do, do not let a weird family own all of your shit. Um, like, I haven't, I've barely even heard of Benetton, but they're- United you know, Colors of Benetton. Yeah, they yeah. make terrible clothes. Yes. B between them, between like four people, they have like several billion euros worth of wealth. Um, and th through a holding company that owns a holding company, uh, they owned 30% of Autostrada, which was then renamed to Atlantia. Um, and this operated like two thirds of Italy's motorways. It repaired them, it inspected them. Um, incidentally, they also own like 60% of the fucking roadside restaurants. Um, and the company that inspects all of the highway inspections. I want to say most of those restaurants are not roadside. They're in fact suspended over the Autostrada, which looks really cool. <laughs> Shit, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but so in, in, in a very literal sense, vertical integration, right? Yes. Um, so, so, so Benetton, the Benettons are making like money hand over fist over this. Uh, they basically own a, a huge amount of the sort of like strategic Italian road infrastructure. Uh, and it's it's 1999. Everything's going to be perfect forever. Next slide, please. 2008. Uh, what happened then, Alice? Well, uh, do, do you recall the uh, the subprime mortgage crisis when oh, oh, uh, sure do. A, a bunch of American banks were well, international banks really were like packaging up uh, mortgages that they had issued that they knew were likely to be defaulted on. Into uh, collateralized debt obligations, Hell CDOs. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, it's good when they do that. 
and and then traded those collateralized debt obligations, uh, hoping that the mortgages would never actually fail. And then the mortgages did fail, and it took out uh, uh, Lehman uh, Brothers, Lehman Brothers, Goldman Sachs. Uh, no, best earns. Uh, Goldman Sachs like ate shit off of this. It, it, it destroyed a huge amount of uh, a, a huge amount of money instantly, uh, and it really hit Italy quite badly. Next slide, please. I mean, this is this is sort of a historical argument you can make, right? You can you can say Italy was was growing, and then the two thousand and eight financial crisis fucked it, or you can take the longer view, which I like to do, and you can say Italy was sort of. Uh, it, it, demonstrating sort of a, a false growth by privatizing stuff, and uh, essentially, in, in like real terms, has been this like long decline since the eighties. Mm. Um, and it, you know, it, Italy, like we know what Italy's like, right? It's like the stereotypes. It's a, a bureaucracy and torpor and corruption and organized crime. Ferraris, and Ferraris, yeah. and, and and fifteen governments in a month, and and little, yeah. little industrial cartels. Very nice high speed trains. Yes. 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 Um, the stuff that's good is really good. Yeah. The stuff, the stuff that's, that's bad, bad is, is really, really bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Exotic cars made by hand, in which the doors, not if they'll fall off, when they'll fall off. Yeah. Yeah. If, <laughs> Doing... you, if you buy what is basically a salvage title fucking uh, Countach, that's on you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Do, doing 16 different conspiracy theories at the same time. All of which are uh, actually happening. Yes, yes. And so it, it, Italy, Italy's economy never really kicked the can far enough down the road to become post-industrial in a way that even the UK did. And we're seeing that, like, we're, you know, we're reaping that now. But uh, Italy never even really got that far. Uh, and so uh, there was this sort of huge increase in, amongst other things, cost of living, as uh, beautifully illustrated by Liam's pizza inflation diagram here. Thank you. How many tomatoes <laughs> do you get in a case of tomatoes? I don't know. 24, I would think it would be know. by weight. You get, you get um, 20, 24 tomatoes, exactly. <laughs> no, it's so, by weight. Alice is right. You can get 25 pounds of tomatoes from Costco. Finally, I've been right wow. about something. Um, <laughs> so, so it, uh, a beautiful statistic that, again, that Liam found is that in 2006, uh, Italy spent 14 billion euros on its roads. Uh, in 2010, Italy spent four billion euros on its roads. This took a, a, a 10 billion euro haircut. Uh, I will say, I will say that the uh, Italy and Spain are both extremely good at um, keeping costs down on infrastructure investment. Um, they have some of the lowest, you know, costs per unit of infrastructure of anywhere in the world. Well, they, um, I mean, they had to get a lot better after this because they just ripped out uh, like seventy percent of the budget, um, yes. and and so a lot of uh, Italy's infrastructure just sort of collapses metaphorically, and a lot of Italy's infrastructure just sort of collapses. Next slide, please. Literally, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I I really like yeah. this picture. This is like a. <laughs> <laughs> like a little, a little road bridge that has just perfectly taken out one tiny cop car. To me, this is perfect Italian vibes. This would probably be uh, another uh, post tension structure. This is a concrete box girder. Yeah, just <clears throat> donk. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, everyone who was everyone was saying that the fucking uh, Mirandi Bridge is going to collapse. Uh, this is a, a Europe-wide problem of, of infrastructure, it's true in uh, Spain as well, France, uh, even Germany. Italy's particularly bad, um, and you get a lot of mysterious acts of God's love. Uh, between 2013 and 2018, ten bridges collapse in Italy. Uh, it, it's pretty minor in, like, in this sense, which is like, you know, it squishes a cop car, which yeah, doesn't have it's anyone doing in it. Access, right? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It squishes an empty cop car. Um, but like, it's unsettling for for your concrete bridges to just be doing this like more or less routinely. Um, and so, uh, the the political system of Italy springs into action. Um, next slide, please. To Such say, that it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we got we got to do something about this, right? Uh, Alta Strada and 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 the sort of like the Italian government have this plan, which is to replace the bridge, to replace the Ponte Mirandi with a ground route, the uh, Gronda di Ponente, which is like 
a bypass of a bypass. We're going to totally re-infoculate the whole Genoese uh, highway system. It's going to go to like a a new uh, like new interchange system, which is going to have a restaurant above it, and that's going to be cool. Mm. Going to go around to the north. Um, thing is, right? I kind of see this a bit as like the boy crying wolf a bit. Uh, in the uh, the Italian political system. Uh, is very very slow, very corrupt. Often, uh, particularly the sort of like the establishment Italian politics, like uh, uh, you know Christian democracy, um, and so this this plan is wildly unpopular, and there are good reasons for it to be unpopular. We've talked about like induced demand before. We've talked about like why are you still building highways? Uh, yes, perfectly reasonable questions to ask. Uh, and this guy who. Italian name alert, Beppe Grillo. Um, That's not real. Hey, I'm Beppe. <laughs> this guy, this guy's, this guy's a comedian originally. He's a stand-up comedian, um, and he became head of what was initially a joke political party, the Five Star Movement, uh, at, which has since become the sort of the dominant force in Italian politics. Has become incredible, twisted in various different ways. It's become oh, yeah. like. Very like dubious, but like I would describe the 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 five star movement as like basically the only like true populists in the sense of the vibe is uh, fuck the establishment often for very good reasons. Um, therefore, just whatever that guy particularly feels like doing on a particular day. And so, in this instance, they were one of the big drivers behind this dissatisfaction with Italian politics in the form of. Building this big bypass. Um, there's uh, there's a thing here on, on on the 8th of April 2013. The Five Star Movement published an article on their blog uh, about the fable of the imminent collapse of the Ponte Mirandi, which was then very quickly deleted. Um, next slide. Yeah, that's. I, I I mean, it's not like the the collapse was inevitable, though. No, hmm. they would have just had to do something about it. Well, I don't think they supported that either. Oh. Oh. Well. 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 On the... Uh, God damn it, let me fucking scroll here. On the 14th of August, 2018... Oh no! Uh, it, it's like, uh, late morning, 11.30 in the morning, it's this massive rainstorm. Um, thankfully, the bridge is pretty empty, there's like a, a festival that's like keeping traffic off of the streets. Um, and what happens is the bridge falls down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the big, the big red bit that's just not there anymore. Um, mm. like two of these stays, well, either one of them collapses or both of them collapse. You know, uh, and it, so, it takes the rest down with it. Under under exceptional loading, one of the cable stays collapses. Once that happens, all four of them are going to collapse because this is a balanced structure between. Um, essentially, the way this works is you have the cable stay. This uh, or this part acts as one unit. Then you have the sort of cantilevered section between each unit of cable stay. That's the pattern. You can see the reinforced one back here. Um, so once one of these stays goes, that whole section comes down. Um, and there was actually a surveillance video which caught this collapse. Oh yeah, there's there's a um, few videos of this. Uh, which we're, I, I, listen, we've tried to embed video in this YouTube we video before. <laughs> um, no, it's, Find it, it, it yourselves. Yes. Um, this it, particular section had been exhibiting a lot of signs of, uh, uh not doing well for a couple weeks incoming. before the collapse. <laughs> there were a bunch of big cracks in the roadway. It was a little more unsettled than it normally was. Um, it was, uh, it, it, it was a problem which was eminently detectable, um, but you would have had to have closed the bridge while you'd do further investigation. There were also uh, there was also a situation where they were dumping a, they were doing some works on it, so they dumped a bunch of Jersey barriers on there, so there was more load than usual. Right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the 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 tower collapses, the roadway collapses, it dumps a bunch of cars and trucks uh, either into the dry riverbed, onto an apartment building, onto railroad tracks. Um, just just in general, like it, it, it just rains cars and bridge deck. You can see this on the bottom right. This one truck that like stopped just in time. 
Um, yeah, kind of a symbol of the whole thing. It. The guy literally, you know, said, I basically, I stopped as soon as I could and I just turned around and ran. Yeah. I think there was one van that was like stuck on the edge for several hours with a guy inside, which is, you don't want to be nope. in that situation, oh, I would say. That's not a good situation to be in. That's sort of like a Looney Tunes type situation. Yeah. It's very funny <laughs> in the cartoon, and then it happens in real life. And you're like, ah, oh, this, this kind of sucks, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like falling off a cliff or getting hit by a wrecking ball. <laughs> getting an anvil dropped on you. Getting an uh, anvil dropped on you in real life. Not very good. Workman's no, comp. Happened to Amon though. Uh, <laughs> next slide, please. Um, so, I mean, this this kills 43 people, injures another 16. Uh, it makes 600 people homeless instantly because your house has just had a bridge dropped on it. Um, you know, the firefighters are up trying to dig people out of the wreckage all night. Um, what is what is interesting is that the Benettons, uh, the Benetton family, take two days to issue a statement to be like, "Oh, that sucks. Sorry about that." What is the point of having PR flax, whose literal job this is, if they're not going to put one out right away? That's your whole job. It's just to catch shit. Because you you've been you're suffering from success. You've been like uh, drinking little coffees, standing yes. at the bar, much like DJ Khaled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've been doing like House of Gucci shit, and therefore, you know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I, I, I mean, what do you even say in the press release? I, I, I mean, uh, sorry, our, our bridge collapsed. Our but, bad, uh, yo. Listen, we're, we're gonna give them all coupons for a sale at J.C. Penny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to buy the ugliest sweatshirt ever made at a slightly <laughs> reduced rate? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a mail-in rebate, that's not a coupon. Let's that's be right. very clear about that. It's a mail-in rebate, yeah. So, I mean, Don't worry, they, most of them aren't going to use them. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, this is uh, a huge sort of psychic wound in Genoa, and like in Italy more generally, like, you know, I, I don't think we talked about the sort of cultural impact that this bridge had, but it was kind of like, it's like the Brooklyn Bridge, brackets Italian. Um, and uh, like overnight, it's just gone. There's actually an architectural petition to try and save it, but it, it very rapidly becomes apparent that it has to be demolished. Um, I would be once it once it fell down, that would have been difficult to put back up. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe they want to just like fill the gap tooth. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. something I'm very familiar with. With the epoxy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but so this this also becomes a sort of a political controversy in that uh, people feel that it's something that uh, the Italian establishment, in the form of like the Benettons and Democrats Christiana and like um, y you know the, the establishment, the deep state, whatever, have like stitched this up, right? Like seventeen families boycott the the memorial service. There's this quote from uh, from one who went who said. Uh, the central government will scapegoat the bridge company, the company will scapegoat someone else, they're all to blame, and we all know how bad our infrastructure is. Fair enough. Um, so, th th there are like, we're only just beginning to feel the sort of like political effects of this, because the trial, uh, because they put 50-something people on trial for like corporate manslaughter for this, uh, the thing about Italian justice you may be familiar with is very fast, uh, very efficient. <laughs> and so the trial, the, tri the trial started this month. Wow. Um, uh, but you know, I I read about it, and people, uh, you know, people testifying uh, are like, this isn't just about the bridge. This is like a whole political order that delivered the fucked up bridge that is on trial, uh, and the hope is to like obtain a a better Italy from it. Um, I I you know, your guess is as good as mine as to how successful that's going to be. Um. The good news, I guess, is that they do force that, like, the courts force the Benettons out of the motorway business. Um, nice, but just in like an eminent domain way, they get paid for it. Um, mm. Like, they they are forced to essentially sell their stake in in Autostrada to the Italian state. Um, oh, harsh! They they uh they put it in Trenitalia. Right afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Autostrada pays like uh, three point four billion euros compensation, which does get you a lot of Xboxes divided mm. up amongst uh, forty three people. And then uh, you got to figure they're also paying the uh, six hundred people made homeless, and then 
most of all, the landlord of the building that got oh, busted. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. He probably yeah. got he probably got two and a half billion of that. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest <laughs> victim of all. Yes. The lawyer. Yes, of course. That's right. And the best. Oh, the lawyer still... of the landlord of oh, the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the, the ugly clothes family is still doing very well for themselves. Uh, their collective worth is still about like two point nine billion Congratulations, euros. Congratulations, fuckholes. <laughs> yeah. It's between four people, so it's not. I'm doing I'm, the podcast go, logic here. It's I'm between go, four people. It's I'm not as bad as it sounds. A, I'm going to go into a universal, a uh, uh, United Colors of Better Than a Piss on the sweatshirts. <laughs> How would you tell a difference? Uh, next slide, please. Well, they do wet. Yeah, yeah. Well, so they built a new one. Uh, they got yes. because uh, you know who uh, they got Renzo Piano to do it because he's from Genoa. I am surprised that uh, Renzo Piano designed such a. Plain looking bridge here. It looks like an off I'm gonna ramp. I'm going to be honest. It is not. It, a, it is not. Not a. Um. Not architecturally interesting in a way. Not the old one was. No. I. I. I put in the. Um. I put in the notes here that it looks like a left page up pressed too many times in sk in city skylines ass That's bridge. Skitty skylines. Skitty skylines. Oh boy. Th th there might be more interesting bits of it, but this is the photo that I have. It's supposed to evoke boats because Genoa. It's supposed to have be like sails and a boat deck and shit. Um, sure it is. If one, one funny detail I noticed for this: uh, the bridge will be constantly monitored by four robots designed by the Italian Institute of Technology. Because that's what you trust, right? Is a robot designed by the Italians? At some uh, point, the doors are going to come off. Equipped with wheels, they're gonna they're gonna wow. trundle along the external rails of the oh bridge with their little articulated arms, and they're gonna or they're gonna automate the inspection of the underside of the bridge deck. Seems like a mistake. Now, I just want to say this: uh, if we learned one thing from the design of the previous bridge, it's that the problems on the bridge are on the inside, not the outside. Well, I mean, consider this progress because it's harder thank to you. bribe thank a robot. For thank you for shouting that in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Italian Institute of Technology. I would never has, shout in your ear. I, the, it, never. <laughs> the Italian Institute of Technology announces the the development of the first corrupt robot. There's no. I, 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 I take the bribes. A robot I uh, inspect the, the pizza. You can have a guy. You know, the way you inspect this bridge from the underside is that once every two or three years, you have a guy walk along the street. And like with a pair of binoculars, and you just look. Right? Well, you would have to pay that guy, and you this know, is true. instead of that guy, you could have a robot who does it all the time, doesn't complain, isn't in a union, and polishes the solar panels on the side of this thing as a bonus. There's um, solar panels on the side. So I'm told. Oh um, my god! What so does that generate like a uh, like half a kilowatt, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, like so, on a on a nice day, you could run a laptop off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think's powering the RGB? Um, <laughs> it's cool. It's a gamer bridge. I believe that'd be uh, G Y uh, W R. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the important thing is that you know because it's it's Renzo Piano. This new bridge is going to be fine, and we've we've all we've all learned a lot, and. You know, everything's gonna be fine, so long as the economy doesn't. Next slide, please. Oh no, not again! Oh no! Probably fine. You know, I, f I feel like we're getting these not stonk slides closer and closer together every few yeah. years. It's funny how that works. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Mm. Build a new bridge when this one falls down. Exactly. Put, um, put 50 Alta Strata executives on trial for uh, corporate manslaughter. Well, I will say a lot of the problems with uh, pre-stressing are easier to solve with post-tensioning because one of the things about the previous bridge is, of course, once those cables were in there, they were in there. Now, with post-tensioning, those cables are threaded. It's a big threaded rod, right? And that means that when, when they start to relax too much, what do you do instead of having to replace them is you get a guy with a big wrench. And you tighten them back up. You I'm do like that as a robot. Every couple years, uh, well, more than every couple years, every couple, like a decade or so, right? So I, it's much easier now because you just need a guy with a wrench. It really does seem that this is like one of the plainest, like 
architect caused disasters we've done in a minute. <laughs> well, I don't like, think the um, the idea of maintaining the building was as as prevalent. Uh, I, I, a lot of the problems with this is sort of early days of uh, pre stress concrete, um, and it was not not necessarily clear how long these structures would last. Um, and th that's why like a whole, a whole lot of like, uh, pretty stressed concrete, thin shell concrete buildings of that era, you know, stuff like that. They're, they're starting to have serious problems and they're either, you know, you, you might, you get a couple like really great renovations or those things are just going to get demolished. Right. You know, mm. um, or they're going to fall in on their own. But I think this was, uh, a particularly, you know, it, 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 it is structurally innovative, but it turns out the innovation was bad. Uh, <laughs> you probably shouldn't have done that. It's an interesting so, so idea the cost that of turned progress. out to not be good. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't repeat this idea a bunch of times around the world. And those, <laughs> Thank God for those, that. Yeah. those bridges have not also been, oh no, the same thing happened in Libya. Like, the bridge yeah. didn't fall down, they just had to, like, replace a bunch of shit. So that's that's the fucking that's the Ponte Mirandi. Uh, also, yes. I'd like to note that we got through this entire thing without releasing <laughs> what I named the slideshow. So well done, us. Yes, you called it. No, uh, no. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah. Collapse it, you know. Collapse And I only say that because it, when Alice and I were throwing this together again this morning, mm -hmm. uh, because we are. Uh, we feel bad when we don't release content to you disgusting, ugly, sweating hogs. Well, the content just, like, we have to get it out of us, because it, the content just sort of generates itself, and we have to, like, yes. purge ourselves yeah, with the content. Yeah, we're, we're, we're chiseling from the marble. Really, you know, yeah. we're, we're just the translator of what's in the marble. That's right. Uh, now, I, I will say, uh, I totally forgot. Whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. What do we learn? I don't uh, know. Uh, you don't need. Uh, I I hate to say this because I I understand doing things for aesthetic reasons, but like, stop fucking innovating in engineering. Stop. Mm. Stop it. Stop it. It's all bad. It's all so bad. So the, the the big podcast dartboard with a picture of Santiago Calatrava on it that we I, that we all share. I gotta say I am anti uh, pre stress concrete. I I think the whole. The whole concept of reinforced concrete in general, I think, was a bad idea. I think we should avoid it. Um, and just use one action. Just uh, use, hush on. Yeah, just use regular concrete, or I don't know. Maybe you could do like mass timber or something like that. That's pretty durable. Ooh, timber uh, bridge. Yeah, get that sort of like a eighteen nineties railroad feel. Mm -hmm. oh. Trestles. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, oh, the Ashtabula horror. Back from the dead. <laughs> At least we stopped our fire chiefs from drinking so much. Mostly. Yes, mostly. Um but yeah. Um I make your make your structures easy to inspect and maintain. Yeah. Yeah. Don't give it to robots. Get a person. Get just get a guy. Just have a guy like, do it. Just a guy with binoculars. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to shout out someone. I can't believe I'm doing this. Sure. Whoever Whoever runs, well, there's your trans.blogspot.com and does fan transcriptions of Well, There's Your Problem. Oh, fuck, that's so cool. Uh, oh, thank God. Yo, that's pretty fucking dope. I, you I deserve, tried you, transcribing you, you this deserve, shit for the subtitles and the, you, no, you I deserve, couldn't do it. You deserve some credit. That's, that's real fucking cool. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Very much, yeah. yes. Uh, Alright, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety, Safety Third. Safety Third. Stop stealing our jokes, by the way. I'm sorry, I did. I wrote like 70% of you. the- Not you. Not oh. you. You're good. Yeah. I love you. You're not the problem. Oh. Hello, Roz, Liam, and Alice. Shut Ex up! Exclamation point. <laughs> Nailed it. No guest. Your, your podcast well, has gotten well, me through the juicy. first week- <laughs> Your podcast has gotten me through the first week of the post-row world. Aww. Also, have you noticed that in 2022, the 24th of the month has been cursed about half the time? I have. That's true of like any date you could yeah. pick. Yeah, uh, August is a particularly cursed month for me personally, so I'm just hoping we can get this out without incident. I think April's the cruelest month. It's not much, but here's my safety third. I, I read this, and it's not much is an understatement. 
Um, you're putting yourself down. <laughs> I used to work for a landlord. Uh, uh, and part of my job was to take in calls for maintenance. Ow. With that in mind, let me take you on a quick tour of when poorly installed PEX tubing flooded an apartment building. Mm. The building had been converted from an old rooming house into many bizarrely shaped apartments. That's Exhibit 1. Oh, that is a weird what building. What the fuck? Yeah. That's a nice Victorian house right there. You're a nice what, Victorian what, what's, house. What's that roof gable doing? Oh, that? Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> that, that's, that that's, a, that's a Southeast Pennsylvania thing right there. You put the yeah. roof gable over the, uh, over Why? the bay window. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I got to make my house have a have a hat. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a that's a it's Delco jaunty thing. ass face. It's a very it's very jaunty. Yes, mm. uh, you can see. Look at that a lovely whimsical paint. building. You got a painted over <sighs> transom window. You got a. Uh, I mean, all of this has been painted white when it should be several colors. Um, you know. Uh, anyway, the contractor, who was a dubiously licensed outfit. That was known to leave creative solutions trademark behind in every job and installed a dishwasher in the top floor unit. We advertised the unit as newly remodeled and it rented quickly. The tenants had the usual complaints, but harped often about the lead paint disclosure form they had to sign before moving in. Hmm. There was capital N. No known lead in the building. Then why do I have that? to sign oh. the lead paint disclosure form? Shut up! Shut oh up! Oh my god. <laughs> About a year in, I got a frantic call saying the dishwasher was flooding the apartment. Uh. <laughs> the usual response was to tell them to use the red shutoff valve under the sink and wait for maintenance to show up. Knowing, that's in air quotes, knowing that this had an easy temporary fix I told the tenant to use the shutoff valve. As I said to turn the red valve, to which they gave a single sharp ha in reply. <laughs> that sounds like phone, my dad, dude. <laughs> yeah. The phone started to ring with two other calls coming in. With a slightly ominous feeling, I answered the other calls. They were from the same building from tenants on the first floor reporting water coming in through their light fixture. Oh, that's one of the things you don't want water coming in through. It was later discovered that the creative contractor installed the dishwasher in the top floor unit using a shark bite clamp. That's number two here. Uh huh. And an extreme bend on the PEX tubing, which is number three here, which I later learned is a guarantee for failure because it will eventually just pop free. Aren't there 90 degree plumbing parts like pretty commonly everywhere? Uh Yes, there's one right here, but that's like made of brass. That's expensive. Mm. Yeah. Um, this would not normally be a major problem, save that the clamp was above the shutoff valve, leaving absolutely <laughs> no way to shut off the water. <laughs> <laughs> the first maintenance guy on the scene, after discovering the problem in the apartment, went to shut off the water in the basement only to find that the shutoff had been permanently locked in the open position, and the only way to shut off the water would be to shut it off at the street. He called to inform me, and I called the city, since it was their shutoff, ampersand, uh, that's, that's one of those corrupted ampersands right there, it says and amp, uh, right? Oh, I yeah. hate those. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible when that happens. Ruins the whole day. Anyway, that's the podcast. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> and we needed their key. After getting a brush off that the city would be there in 24 hours, I used my very best Karen voice to say that I would hold them responsible for flooding almost a dozen apartments. And very quickly, they had someone on the scene. How do you flood nice. a dozen apartments in this? Real carefully. I was about to say, yeah. It's, it's like, well, they mentioned like weird shaped apartments. This is sort of like Tetris. Hmm. You got room for uh you got room for a twin bed and a sink and I'd be grateful. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. A toilet, all in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> Literally shitting where you eat because there's no other option. <laughs> yeah. Someone who is as unequipped as all of us to turn off the water 
because of the fucked up Victorian Roaring Twenties lot design. Hmm. Or the person who was on the scene, yes. Uh, swimmingly. You, you can see you have the street, you have the street, you have the lots, you have the lot in question, right? And the building is down here, right? The lot had, at some point, been halved like a Republican had been told to gerrymander it to win another seat on the city council. And the shutoff valve was on a different street inside someone's fenced yard what behind the a fuck? locked what? gate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I like this. That's, this is good that, planning. Don't do that. The blue lines are the original lots, right, as you can see here. Um... The green and purple indicate where this particular lot was split in a Republican half, right? Like, like so. Yeah. The building on Smith Street was the old carriage house of the building on Jones Street, right? And had been converted to a residence sometime in the 1930s. After deciding to cut the lock on the gate, the city was finally able to shut off the water of the building, but not before thousands of gallons of water had been pumped up to the top floor and flooded oh, back Jesus down through all the apartments. Also, remember the lead paint disclosure form? Vividly. Well, during repairs and restoration, it was discovered not only was the building's, not only was the building's paint almost all lead, all your kids Every like that. Every story was found to has, have asbestos in the linoleum and the tiling. Mm. <laughs> Lastly, in an ironic twist of fate, the year after the full asbestos remediation was completed, the building burned down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens when you take the asbestos out. It's good fireproof. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. about to say, you should have, should have left that in there. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave it where it is, it's not that it's bad. Fine. It's fine. Asbestos is fine until you start. The only people who get mesothelioma are people who work with asbestos. You're not like cutting it up or playing with it or whatever. It's probably fine ish. Good idea to leave it in place if it's there. Mm. Um, Anyway, I have proof of it if you need it. Anyway. Oh, no, I believe you. Yeah. With love, A. Thanks, A. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. The letter A. This podcast Dude. brought to you by the by letter, letter A. A. <laughs> Shake hands with danger. All right, that was that was the podcast. Uh, does anyone have any commercials before we go? Uh, next episode, the uh, Boston molasses disaster. I would advertise oh, right, yes. the Trash Future live show, but in Edinburgh, but it's sold out already. So that'll do. You know, d- d- don't show up to that anymore because yeah, we yeah, can't let you in. Don't show up. Yeah, don't go to Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. Um, well, go, go and see Milo's yeah. show. He has dates for that. That's on yes. all all month at the Edinburgh Fringe. Listen to all of my other shit. Kill James Bond, uh, Trash Future, uh, Liam, uh, Ten Thousand Losses, uh, and Lions Love by Donkeys. Uh, we have business to talk about after. Okay. Huh? Uh. I Is it too early to announce our live show? Yes! I think so. God okay. oh, damn it, that was I, why I was saying business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye everyone. <laughs> bye. <laughs>